Hey guys, welcome to my top tips for ranking up in Rocket League video. Um, we're going to start off here actually just by queuing up into a unranked game because I'm pretty sure my unranked MMR is very low and I'm going to just illustrate my th top three tips for ranking up from bronze to silver and they all fall under the same category of play safe. So number one rule uh, is I don't want to be going for kickoffs at this rank. Usually, uh, those of you who know me know that I love going for kickoffs. Uh, but I won't be at this rank. I'm going to be staying away from kickoffs, and that's just mainly to cover the goal, uh, because my teammates might not hit the ball and kick off if I'm in bronze. They might just miss completely, or they might not do a safe kickoff and get dunked on. Overall, I want to be covering the goal and making sure uh, that we don't get scored on immediately. Just defend uh, uh, pretty much everything. Just be ready to defend everything. And that leads me on to my second point uh, for ranking out of bronze into silver, and that is um, you want to... Be ready for the worst at all times. So constantly, no matter how bright things are looking, I'll be backing off um, and I'll be making sure that I don't take myself out of the game uh, for like extended periods of time or even at all. Uh, and if the other team look like they have a clear coming in, I want to be relevant and uh, ready to intercept that. If they have a passing play coming up or a dribbling play coming up, I want to be the, uh, ready to stop that. If they're about to shoot, I want to be ready to save that. That's the philosophy that you need if you're in bronze. You can't rely on your teammates uh, to help you out defensively you've got to be ready to do everything yourself and the third thing uh is find space you'll notice right now i'm at the back uh and i'm finding a lot of space to myself because at lower ranks and i i don't actually know exactly what rank this is but this will look very similar to uh bronze games uh, i just joined this one late there's not been any goals since i joined which you know isn't that surprising uh given the play style that i'm showing you guys um and that is to yeah just play safe find space don't rush forward and clogged, uh, you know, various portions of the field. That actually worked out really well. I was like, well, how am I going to illustrate this? Because I don't actually have a bronze account. I'll just queue up on ranks and see what happens. But that was, you know, that's a pretty good illustration, I think, of what I was trying to say. Just play safe, find space, uh, don't rely on your teammates to defend, and absolutely cover the goal in kickoffs. Those are my top three tips for guessing from bronze to silver. Uh, my silver to gold um, category all revolves around surprising your opponents. Uh, number one, uh, thing that you could do to surprise your opponents is basic wall defense. And I just threw this pack together because I couldn't find one. But it's pretty simple. I'm sure somebody can make a better pack than this. And uh, it's all about using the back wall to defend in, uh, you know, in mainly not in 1v1, but uh, it's mainly in 2v2 and 3v3. You want to be able to get up on that back wall, intercept that ball before it bounces down into the middle of the box. Because at this rank, silver to gold rank, there will be a lot of these balls going off the crossbar undefended. And if you're able to get up there, time your arrival, and get a good clear uh, to the side of the field or over the top of the other team into the midfield, that's going to be extremely valuable for your inner team. I'll put this pack in the, in the in the description, but like I said, I'm sure somebody can make a better one. I, didn't, I couldn't find one, so I just made this. Uh, but again, the main thing is just time your arrival, uh, make sure that you're ready at the side of the pitch or at the side of the box rather to get up on that back wall if the ball does go high and you know maybe we're expecting a shot here oh it's gone on the crossbar let's get up there and make sure to hit it after the bounce because just like a half volley on the ground if we hit it after the bounce it's going to go farther um, and we can maybe if you're really really good at it catch the other team off guard by putting it way over their heads uh, but that's that's number one tip use the back wall in defense second tip power clear and actually for this one I'm going to go into uh, all-star aerial training. This is how I learned how to power clear way back in the day. And we don't actually need to do any aerialing and all-star aerial training uh, for it to be useful. We're just going to try and time our arrival and meet this ball right on the bounce and try to hit it as hard as possible. Scoring, you know, you can do that if you want to, but it's not necessary really for this skill. All you want to be doing is hitting the ball as hard as you can. Get it way over their crossbar if, uh, if you want to. Just, it's all about timing that arrival, that your car can arrive at the ball at speed right after it bounces. Hit it on the bounce and just send it as high as you can into the other team's half. Those power clears, if you've got space and time to do them in 3v3 in particular, win games, they, especially in the silver to gold range. Just being able to slam the ball like this um, consistently, getting it way, way out into the other team's half. It does multiple things. Buys your team time to get boost and then to, uh, you know, it swings the possession and the pressure onto the other uh, team's half. Um, so yeah, all things considered, power clearing, very, very important, and it's all about timing. Same with the same with the wall clears, all about timing your arrival, that when you get there, the ball is about to bounce, and you can hit it um, after that bounce. 
Uh, number three, we can actually stay in all-star aerial training, but you don't really have to. Um, if, you, if, the, if having a ball in, in this uh, section helps, uh, then absolutely go into all-star aerial training. Uh, but yeah, from silver to gold, you need to be able to learn how to fast aerial. And there's lots of tutorials out there how to do this. I'm not going to tell you, uh, or I'm not going to show you, you know, a, an in-depth tutorial on how to fast aerial right now. I'm sure most of you are already aware of this technique. Um, but the TLDR is, you know, aerialing like this, where you're just leaning back, flying, and then front flipping into the ball. It won't cut it if you're wanting to get into gold these days. Even people in silver can fast aerial, and they're going to beat you to every ball if they're jumping while leaning back and boosting, uh, and then jumping a second time after letting go of their analog stick or, or keyboard controls, if that's what you play with. Um, and they're going to beat you to every ball just by getting higher than you can. Uh, but you could do the same thing to your opponent. Just learn how to fast aerial. Uh, like I said, if you prefer having a ball there to go for, just get back into all-star aerial training. Uh, see where that ball is going to be. And then, yeah, just get a nice fast aerial up there to contest it in the midfield. And that's going to be a super, super useful skill for you, getting into gold for the first time. As for gold to, uh, gold to platinum... It's all about, in my opinion, high percentage plays. And the, for this, we're going to go into free play. Uh, there's training packs out there for the skills I'm going to show you, but I actually prefer uh, teaching people and doing these myself in free play. And the first one is uh, just power sliding and getting used to cutting around the ball uh, while turning off your ball cam and then landing, landing right on top of the ball where you want to be. Uh, this is a very, very useful skill to have. And I'd say if you're wanting to get into... Uh, platinum, that that should be the latest stage uh, that you want to try and learn this. Just, you know, getting around the ball uh, with a power slide. The second that we're past that halfway, we're, we're boosting and uh, we're turning off ball cam at the same time. Uh, you don't need to do it exactly at the same time, but it kind of helps with this with your timing if you do, I think. So ball cam is on, power slide, start boosting and turn off ball cam uh, as soon as we're lined up in the direction we want to go. That's an incredibly useful skill. Having the ball there for reference is quite helpful, I find. Um, and it's a good like target practice because most of the time that you're doing this, you're going to be turning to get a ball, uh, whether it be a challenge or catch a half volley, take a shot. Uh, sometimes you'll need to turn more sharply and you'll need to throw a little bit of reverse in there uh, as well as just uh, turning on the spot. Throwing in... Th oh, sorry, I boosted too early there. Uh, throwing a reverse in there like that it kind of turns you more on the spot um, than just uh, doing a power slide turn without a reverse. Uh, so that's how you can, you know, master, I think, power sliding. Just get into get into free play and start turning around the ball. And this is definitely going to be a useful skill, not just because of enabling you to turn faster, but also because it's going to help you with what I'm going to uh, suggest you learn next. And that is uh, ground moves. Um, these are extremely efficient. They're very, very safe and they're high percentage plays. So the first grind move that I that I usually teach people is um, just the very basic drive under the ball and flick it. And if you don't want to have to wait for free play uh, to keep on you know, respawning the ball, what you can do is go into um, a private match, disable goal reset, unlimited boost, unlimited time. And we're just going to create that match. And when you get in, it'll be the exact same feel as free play because we've got that unlimited boost and we've got the unlimited time. Uh, that's really all free play is, right? Um, but the disable goal reset is a really, really useful addition as well because it's going to take, it's going to make your practice more efficient. You're not going to need to wait for this countdown every single time. This is the only countdown we'll see. Um, and after that, uh, you can just go straight into your dribbling practice. So cut into the ball and just try and flick it as fast as you can. And then it's going to respawn in the middle so we can go back into it. Let's just pop it and flick it. Um, this is a very, very useful move at lower, rank, at lower ranks because most of the time that people see you about to take first touch, they're going to close the distance and you'd be surprised how much uh, power you can get on these flicks, even with hardly any run-up, hardly any speed. You can do it from either side. Uh, so that's the first thing I would usually teach people, just cut into the ball and flick. You don't even need to worry about ball carrying yet. Just get that flick timing as good as possible um, because it, then if you're traveling at a defense or even trying to outplay somebody offensively, just being able to do that little flick is really important. And if you are wondering what I'm doing, um, it's pretty simply, I'm leaning my car forwards ever so slightly, just delaying that flick to let me to let me air roll um, just a little bit. And then I'm just diagonal dodging uh, through the ball. So that's why I'm slightly offset to the left there, diagonal dodge to the right. If I was slightly offset to the right, I would diagonal dodge to the left. And very, very useful move. I can't score into an open net. But anyway, very, very useful move. 
uh, to learn there. Another couple of grind moves that you want to learn are these ones. Uh, this is another excellent thing to do in uh, in uh, practice. It's just uh, to start, no, you don't even need to worry about ball carrying again. Just get the ball down the field, cut into it, and then try and lift it. Uh, that wasn't a very good example, but um, again, we're not going to worry so much about ball carrying yet because that's actually a bit more advanced. And I think the fact that people can't ball carry puts them off practicing dribbling, but you don't even need to. In fact, in 2v2, doing this sort of thing is actually more useful at times because people are going to try and demo you from behind. So being able to just push the ball quickly is sometimes the better play, uh, something that we see high-level players do. And yeah, just try to side flip under the ball or just double jump uh, to pop it off the near post or to shoot it. Um, Usually popping it to the near near post will get saved, but or, or popping it into the goal will get saved. But if you pop it into the crossbar of the near post, that's going to be a great pass. Um, but really, the reason that you're going to want to do this is just to practice your um, matching of the ball's speed, because that being able to do that, just match the ball's speed, get alongside it, um, is very very useful um, for dribbling as you as you try and learn more advanced dribbling moves. You need to be able to do this, and you'll you'll find when you start this that you're, you're going to find it very hard. You're going too fast, too slow, and getting right beside the ball and being able to just match its speed and its uh, line perfectly is... It will be muscle memory later on, but to begin with, it's quite difficult. But yeah, as you can see, I'm just rolling it back into the corner, starting to roll it down the line, and then just before the goal, well, we can do something um, like a pop or a flick um, to try and outplay an invisible defender. And there's, of course, more advanced moves that you could do, like cutting across the ball, back flipping to put it to the top corner that they don't expect um, but yeah just do have some fun with it this is the that's the drill that's the basic drill um, and if you want to make it more advanced feel free but it's all about efficiency we're just learning how to control the ball so we don't constantly give it away to the other team and that's really going to be a big difference uh, getting from plat to gold because everybody in that range they're getting a bit better at uh, defending um, and they're getting you know a bit better at shooting and things like that but nobody's really good at maintaining possession. That's like one of the biggest advantages you can have is if you can just maintain the possession and control it. Um, besides just basic dribbling moves like pop, pops and flicks and that, the, the pop that I just showed you and before that the flick, you definitely want to learn how to shoot from the ground. Um, and this is why I like to just make it a self-set um, little arena rather than doing this in a training pack. Um, I think it's more beneficial if you do it like this where you just start, get the ball rolling uh, maybe bounce it once or twice and then just practice shooting to see if you can practice your long distance accuracy or your long distance power you don't even need to shoot uh, from that long distance you could try a closer range shot and of course sometimes you need to dodge sometimes you don't you can take a wider a wider run up and just hook the ball like that look how high that went I didn't even dodge and it was still um, a pretty threatening pass if you think about it so there's yeah just two basic types of shots one of them is a, a half volley and one of them is a just straight shot off the ground and just being able to do both of those uh, that you're setting up yourself very very valuable skill uh, like I mentioned earlier and again you don't need the ball to be bouncing you can just hook it like that and it's still going to be quite threatening so everything that you need to do I think from gold to platinum although you're going to want to work on your other mechanics that I talked about earlier like fast arrows just do, don't just give up on all those things don't just stop practicing them just because you finally made it into gold you don't stop practicing fast aerials you don't stop practicing power clears you still do those things but adding to the mix these are things that I would suggest that this is the time to add it in is your simple ball control your simple ground plays because they're so efficient and they're so safe to do and that's what you need uh, when you're climbing through the middle uh, sort of ranks is safe attacking options things that control the ball things that keep the possession uh, under your control because everybody else uh, they're going to be doing things like this uh, you know missing their wall shot landing in the other team's goal and then just giving you the ball straight away and if you can do something more efficient um, then uh, you're going to have a good time so that's my little my, my main tips of how to get from gold to plat from plat to diamond you need to get a little bit faster it's all about speed and efficiency um, and the first thing that uh, I would suggest you learn and practice if you haven't already, if you haven't already learned how to, by the time that you're in Platinum, it's time to learn how to half flip. I think, yeah, Platinum, sure, you can get to Platinum without half flipping. Beyond that, you really need to learn how to half flip because uh, it's, it, it's invaluable. It's going to help you. It's going to save your neck in so many situations. Uh, of course, the forward half flip is a little bit less useful. You can maybe do it for that squishy kickoff or, you know, for shooting. Um, like this, if the ball's, if you don't have any boost and you don't want to do that 
full roll where your wheels paddle the ball. Uh, but yeah, base, you, you, base, you definitely want to be able to do uh, the backwards half flip by now. Paramount. Um, the other types of recovery that you want to be mastering um, mainly involve landing on walls. Let's say I've just made a save here. I want to land on the inside of the goal and get back into the play. Uh, let's say that we're shadowing uh, or the ball's, you know, high clear this direction and I'm chasing it back. Uh, manage to touch it into the crossbar. Well, we're also going to land on the inside of the goal and get back into the play. And that particular landing that I just did there is something that pro players do all over the field. They'll do that really quick turnaround, get their nose pointing down the wall, and then uh, quickly get back into the play, grab boost, um, recover it as fast as possible, maybe go for a second challenge if the first one didn't work. Uh, that sort of recovery is so important. And it enables you to do things like, I could be challenging the ball here, double jump challenge, miss, okay, we're right back into the game anyway. That recovery is so good. Rather than going double jump challenge, oh no, oh no, oh dear, oh, we're right in the game for a long time. You know, just being able to land on your wheels facing the right direction. If, you, if you're not already doing that by the time you're in platinum, this is the time to start learning it because you're going to catch so many people off guard. They, they maybe get the ball past you um, because you go for a double jump challenge, you just got faked. But then you're going to be so fast to get back into the game, you can maybe demo them and they, they'll be so surprised that you're staying relevant, staying in the game. Um, and it'll also help you with the next thing I'm going to tell you to do. Oh, well, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll hold off on wall shots. I was going to say it enables you to get um, good wall shot practice because you can go for a wall shot and then land on the back wall or go for a wall shot off the, off the back wall and land on the side wall. Just, you know, landing on walls to recover and, you know, half flipping to recover, very important at that level. Um, but the other thing I'm going to mention for, um, for plat to diamond is rotating out of attack. Before, before you're looking to get into diamond, you probably don't need to worry too much um, about boost starving and you don't need to worry too much about demoing goalkeepers because uh, although there's still good things to do, teams are probably going to have bad boost management anyway. Players are not going to be uh, greatly positioned. They're not going to have incredible defense that you need to start star boost starving people and demoing goalies. But once you're looking to get into that sort of diamond range, defenses are a little bit more structured and you can break that down. Uh, let's say that we're attacking here. Uh, we just go for a pass up that wall. Well, on our exit, we're going to demo a goalie, steal this boost. Just add that into your repertoire of play. Uh, that little detour of, uh, you know, we've just centered the ball, didn't work, demo goalie, steal the boost. It should always be hand in hand if possible. Uh, just do one and then the other. We're going to center the ball, maybe demo somebody here uh, and steal this boost. That's just going to become our natural rotation, our default rotation at that level. And it's really going to help you create consistent pressure. And uh, now that we can uh, rely on our recovery and our teams at that level to be a little bit better at positioning, uh, in the midfield, we could take that. It is a risk, you know. We could take that risk to cross over the box, take a demo, uh, take the boost. It's gonna make us back. We're gonna arrive back into the midfield a second or two later uh, than if we just went straight back. However, we've done a bit of damage to the other team um, on the exit. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about for this level of platinum diamond is wall shots. I did allude to that earlier. Um, we're gonna go into a training pack. There's quite a few training packs I've found uh, for wall shots. This one from Poquito is uh, pretty good uh, and the reason I've saved wall shots you know really practicing being aggressive with your wall play until this rank is again because before this point uh, but we, when you're we're looking to get up into the platinum range we don't really want to be doing things like this too much we want to be playing safer you know maybe more on the ground uh, of course you can still practice this sort of thing but don't expect it to yield results um, as reliably as more consistent high percentage plays but yeah, once we get into once we get into uh, the plat range, we're we're gonna be able to do more things like this, where we can just jump off walls, um, and then look to use our wall recovery mechanics and uh, our boost management to get us back into the game and put more pressure on the other team. Um, you know, trying to go for a little bit of a rebound here off the wall. But this is you know a 48 shot pack. I've not even looked at them all. I just looked at the first few and I thought, yeah, this is pretty good stuff. Um, for practicing wall shot mechanics. The one piece of advice I would give you is if you're one of those players that struggles with your timing getting up the wall and your line, try side flipping. Side flipping is actually very useful um, when you're going for wall shots initially like this. I'll just side flip into the ball and you'd be surprised how much easier it is to hit the ball if you're struggling with your front flip timing, if you're not quite getting the ball to aim in the right direction. 
try side flipping. Just get just barely inside the ball and side flip. And then uh, you'll get a pretty accurate shot. And the other noteworthy thing is that your car is going to take a much different line as well. Uh, your car is going to go way over into the middle, which is better for following up with, uh, with rebounds and stuff. But yeah, like I said, now that we're into Platinum, we can rely on our teammates to rotate a little bit more. Of course, they're not going to be perfect, but we can rely on them a little bit better. Uh, to cover you in defense and now that we're getting better at recovering ourselves getting back into play quick uh, getting some consistent pressure on the other team going for things like this uh, becomes more viable uh, that's why but that's why I would wait definitely until you're into plat before really worrying too much about well shots because they are taking you out of the game for a little bit we're relying on our team uh, a little bit not to completely get <laughs> way uh, way too aggressive while we're doing them. Uh, but yeah, you don't even need to, like, it's called a well shot, but shooting isn't usually what you're going to go for. You're just going to try and get some distance and then follow up, um, especially with this one. Unless it's open, then sure. If this is, like, literally an open shot, then, you know, getting it on target is going to be more important. So you can practice that as well. It's really up to you. You've got to kind of imagine what kind of defense you're trying to beat uh, when you're doing these training packs. Uh, but yeah, that's my plot to diamond section. My diamond to champion section all revolves around team play. And this is something that you, even in your random games, you're, you're going to start to see um, as you get higher into the ranks. Um, just naturally, you're going to see teammates helping you out a lot more, hopefully. And you're going to be looking to help them out a lot more. Uh, but the training pack that I want to show you, first of all, for that's going to really help you in the diamond to plat range, or diamond to champion range, is um where is it it's it's i, I really like weight Pro protein's got some excellent training packs this is a very good one uh, called backboard therapy and it's you know usually i mean if we look at where these where these passes are coming from that's got to be a teammate that's made that pass uh so we're going to be following up on his pass with a rebound but yeah definitely give this one a go it's a lot of fun uh i do like that he's made it that you can't just put the ball but you can't bounce shoot it in you've got to actually do a good shot um, it's a bit harder. I was doing this earlier while I wasn't talking. I was doing much better. <laughs> much better. Now, it's, now I'm trying to talk and it's a lot harder. Uh, but yeah, just get into this training pack and practice your rebounds because, it's, like I said, you've got to start actually nail those shots into the net. 40 of them. And uh, I think I looked at like 10 or so myself and they were, they were pretty good. Uh, but yeah, you want to, you want to, usually at this, at this rank, this is when you want to start getting pretty good at rebounds and, you know, preempting that bounce, getting up before the ball is bounced off the back wall. Um, at lower level, this is way too risky to do uh, and to consider a high level play. Your mechanics are not there yet. Of course, it's, if it's fun, go for it. Uh, but if you're looking to rank up, you probably don't want to put this uh, too high up your to-do list. Um, like I said, your mechanics won't be there yet. And secondly, and more importantly, your team's probably not going to um, like be backing you up enough. Uh, you're you're gonna need to rely or you're gonna need to do things that don't rely on your teammates to um, to follow up on what you're doing quite as much as this like this this is something that you I absolutely need a team to rotate behind me or else if I miss uh, the other team are just gonna counter attack and score but yeah that's a great training pack I fully recommend it all the training packs I'm talking about in this little video I'll put them in the description if you want to check them out yourself uh, the second thing that I'm gonna talk about is uh, gonna be ground passing and two types of ground passes in particular that you you sort of see the you, you see more and more opportunities to use these in the diamond to champ range. Uh, you know, I recently ranked up my Smurf through that rank, and that's when you start to see uh, teammates start positioning in passing uh, lanes. And if I'm you know coming down this side, uh, and I see a teammate over there, bam, infield pass. Just hit the ball across to him on the ground. Uh, they can shoot. That's probably the most deadly uh, pass, but one that's more common. And one that's maybe lesser used, but just as effective, is the counter-attack pass. And this is, I think, the most important thing to learn in the diamond to pla uh, the, the diamond to champ range. Uh, don't just clear the ball straight down the middle, like this, every time. You're going to see many, many opportunities in your own games if you're a goalkeeper or if you're looking to clear the ball. Uh, you're going to see this. You're going to see this happen all the time. Um, and you need to take advantage of it. So let's say that we're about to go for a clear here. Uh, let's imagine this ball is about to bounce and we can absolutely thump it full length of the pitch. Um, but what would be even better is if we've got a teammate over on the side of the field already 
why not just hit it in his direction? Instead of just hitting it straight to the other team, let's pass it over to this guy. And he can maybe take a shot that will be unsavable. He can definitely redirect that ball over their net and uh, put them under a lot of pressure. That one pass will win you games. Instead of just blindly hitting the ball straight down the middle of the pitch, uh, look to get that pass to the side. I call it a counter-attack pass because, you know, we're, we're on defense. Uh, and instead of just booming it straight to the enemy goal, let me just hit it down the line to my teammate who's already there. He could be there for a, a plethora of reasons. He might have just taken a 50-50 and lost it, and that's where the ball rolled to you. But yeah, hey, he's still down there. Let's use yeah, let's use that. Uh, catch the other team off guard. Um, so that's one thing, uh, or one pass. I would 100% recommend you start looking out for opportunities to use. Um, and it's probably going to happen more often than infield passing. Because infield passing, you need somebody to usually make a run on the other side of the field. Uh, some players just never do that. Some players will always play behind you. Uh, some players will look to follow up directly uh, in the line that you're in. But other players, when you're taking the ball down one side, they're going to give you that option. They're going to go over to the other side of the field. Definitely use that. If somebody is, is if you realize early on that one of your teammates likes to um, get over there on the far side of the field, definitely utilize that to your advantage. Uh, not only that, it also opens up opportunities for the third thing that I think you want to start doing in the diamond to champ range, and that is mind games. Uh, I don't even need to use that pass uh, option. The other team might see it as well. And if I think, oh, the other team can see my teammate on the far side of the field, I'm just going to pretend to pass to him fake out my uh, opponent um, and maybe create a one-on-one, -on -one, maybe create uh, an opportunity to take a shot or flick the ball over the goal. But yeah, mind games. This is the probably, I think, the the rank that you're going to start finding success with mind games. And the reason I say that is because in lower ranks, and in, in the bronze, in the silver ranks, gold, even up to plat, people don't really look uh, much beyond what they're doing themselves. It's only when you start trying to push into 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 champion out of diamond uh, that your opponents are going to be reading what you're doing a lot more or trying to read what you're doing a lot more, and that makes mind games all the more effective. Because if if I'm uh, faking a shot or a pass or a cut or a pop or whatever, if I'm just getting the ball uh, rolling down the field and wiggling beside it, it really can throw people off and it can get people dodging straight past it. Uh, so this is, I think, the rank that you want to start experimenting with mind games. Not just that kind of mind game, but also, you know, mind games where you're faking uh, shots and faking aerials. Uh, they're also pretty useful. One word of advice, though, if you're going to try and mind game someone, don't have the ball rolling at their goal already. If their ball's ro if the ball's rolling into their goal and you're trying to fake them, it's less likely to work because the ball rolling straight at somebody's goal is a big threat. They're going to be looking at that. Uh, very, very closely. If you roll the ball off target uh, and then you get beside it, then you're the threat. They're going to be looking at you because the ball at that moment is not threatening. It is rolling off target. It's not an imminent threat. They're going to be thinking, oh, what's the threat here? The threat is him cutting the ball and they're going to go for a block um, more often than not. Or, you know, m more often than if you had the ball rolling on target. So that's when you want to mind games. If the ball's rolling beside the goal, uh, this is this is a situation where mind games are very very deadly, and that's if if you want to learn mind games and set yourself up for mind games, get the ball rolling off target uh, before you do it, because that sort of psychology is going to help you a lot uh, outplaying defenders. So yeah, yeah, that's my um, diamond to champ range. For the champ to grand champ range, um, it's all about just advanced offense, advanced defense. We're just taking the game to the highest level. We're trying to emulate pro play uh, and be as consistent as possible while doing so. But the core skills or the new skills, I would suggest that you learn um, both mechanically and strategically um, are, are these. Number one, challenge as a team. Uh, that involves a couple of things. Number one, uh, on the challenge as a team, shortlist is don't dive in if if you're alone at the back in defense um and this is going to be a bit more theoretical so bear with me if i'm alone at the back in defense in 3v3 and the other team are coming at me with the ball the last thing that i want to do is deliberately go for what looks to be a 50 50 try to you know dunk on someone try to get a block those are all bad options uh really because uh my teammates are out of commission what i should really be trying to do is just stall for time that is your mentality if you are last man back. Stall for time, use a couple more fake challenges than you perhaps might otherwise do 
definitely shadowing is very useful. Um, you know, anything that will buy your teammates more time to come back and help you. That is your that's your ideal. Hey, they might even they might even come back and help you on their way uh, into the rotation. They might get a demo on a guy who's trying to dribble you. They might bump uh, the other team away from the play. Uh, so yeah, just stalling, not diving in. Big, big aspect of getting through uh, the champ ranks towards grand champ because you're gonna, you are going to be exposed at times. And the grand that you know the grand champ players, they're gonna take you out of the game so easily if you if you just dive in. If they see you diving in, they're gonna flick it past you every time. If they if they see you rushing them, they're gonna pass it um, off the back wall and field. They're gonna make you look stupid. So don't dive in. Just play uh, the slow game. Play the play the long game. Wait for your teammates to get back and help. And in the same vein, don't isolate yourself. Don't be the guy who cons consistently takes himself out of the game just leaving his teammates at the back. If, if you're going for loads and loads of super aggressive plays where you're using all 100 of your boosts and then you're landing on the other team's back wall or in their goal like this, like if I've just used all 100 of my boosts and I've just landed like this and now I have to try and come back and help my team, that's not the most efficient play. You probably want to do something a little bit more, um, you know, efficient, a little bit more safe, a little bit more helpful to my teammates or to your teammates um, in terms of challenging as a team. Uh, in the same vein, I said don't dive in if you're alone uh, in defense. Also don't dive in if you're alone up front. If I know both my teammates have rotated back, they've just both driven past me in this direction to go get boost or to recover. I wouldn't really want to be making a, a risky challenge uh, at the other end because if I do take myself out of the game, I've just made a challenge in isolation and I might get stuck out of the game for a while. The advantage of having a team is that even if I get dribbled, let's say I'm the first man in for a challenge here and I get dribbled, at least uh, then my teammate can come in and follow up and hopefully intercept the ball uh, that I forced the other player to take past me. And final thing to mention in terms of challenging as a team, this whole heading, which is very important uh, in terms of getting from champ to grand champ, is try and identify what the biggest threat is. And by that I mean, if the other if the other team are about to shoot, if, uh, if a player is about to shoot, yeah, that's pretty deadly, you probably want to block that. If a player is about to pass, that also very dangerous, you probably want to block that. If a player is, however, dribbling in their half, uh, like this, um, and doing this sort of thing, is a shot or a pass that threatening from this distance? Not really. The most the deadly thing at that distance is probably you getting mind gamed so don't get mind gamed because if you get mind gamed if you just flip past the ball then that player is still in full control of the ball and they can make a proactive play on your teammate as well and you've just screwed over your teammate by taking yourself out of the game um, by doing nothing so yeah be very careful to identify the most um, the biggest threat if if you're defending like this if you see it like I'm gonna let's say I'm your opponent right now and I'm, and I'm about to shoot yeah, for sure. From this range, you probably just want to block that shot. Just go for a diving uh, save. If uh, I'm your opponent here, and you see me lining up an infield pass to the back post, yeah, you probably want to get ready to intercept that. That's a pretty big threat. However, if I'm your opponent, and this is me in defense dribbling out of my half, just don't get mind games. Don't get faked. Don't at least make the opponent do something uh, to the ball to get it past you. If they flick it over you, that's perfectly fine. Just look at them. They have to catch up to it regain control of the ball before they can do anything else that would screw over your team. So yeah, that's quite a long theoretical discussion, but hopefully it's helpful to some of you. It all revolves around challenging as a team. Uh, one of the most important things, I think, for ranking up higher than champion. Uh, there's going to be a couple more things. Uh, first one, uh, this is the rest of the stuff's all going to be training pack stuff. Okay, so number one uh, training pack that I'm going to advise you guys get really stuck into. Any other training pack like this would, I'm sure, be uh, useful as well. Uh, that's air roll grind shots, or just air roll shots. Uh, and the reason I would I recommend that you get used to this sort of thing at the higher level when you're really trying to push those top ranks is because you're going to be able to shoot ball uh, angles that you can't shoot without air roll shots. You're going to have more consistency with certain angles, you're going to get more power from other angles, and it's all very experimental. I would just say, you know, get in, get stuck in, practice them. A couple of these shots you don't need to air roll to score, but it can be helpful, and even if you're not shooting on target, it can still be, I think, uh, quite helpful to, to learn how to just get a little bit more power. I'm not, sure, not really sure, not going to lie. Some of the early shots in this pack, I don't really know why they belong, but anyway, we'll, we'll uh, hopefully 
I'm going to skip one more, then show you one other shot, uh, and then I'll get into the last one. But yeah, air roll, um, air roll shots are very useful for tight angles, for power from distance, for power from uh, tight angles. Um, even like just trying to clear the ball, hitting, enabling you to hit the ball with uh, the corner of uh, the, the car's hitbox rather than the, uh, the, the, you know, maybe the, the, the roof or the, the, the wheel. And just being able to lean in, in a certain way uh, into into a shot it can be very useful. Um, but yeah, I, I would say this is about the time that you got to just suck it up, start using that air roll button for something other than uh, recovery uh, to try and get those super powerful shots. There you go, that was perfect. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. Doing this shot to the top corner would be really hard without that air roll to reach around the ball and get it into that top corner at power. Uh, like I said, the a couple of the earlier shots in this pack are not quite as, um, I think, applicable. But the latter shots are all um, pretty good uh, to do. I really have to focus on these because when I'm talking, it's hard <laughs> to do them. But yeah, air roll shots definitely going to play a big part in getting you uh, from uh, champ to grand champ. I'm trying to do something a little bit fancy here. To go, I'm going for top right with an air roll into side flip shot. It's something I've had success with because I'm air rolling to bring the right corner of my car across the ball. Uh, or into reach of the ball and then flipping to the, to the left as well. It's actually a pretty good way to score kickoff goals as well because uh, this this gives a lot of power without actually uh, needing much momentum in your car itself. That wasn't a good example though. It's hard to do this. I swear that training pack ball still changes speed. Yeah, I, if I let go... Okay, well that was <laughs> this is what I was going for. I think if I'm not boosting when I start this shot the ball goes slower. That's why I was able to reach it this time. Might be a, might be just a placebo thing. I don't know. Conspiracy theory time. But yeah, just air rolling to the left and do a side flip shot to the left to get a pretty nasty air roll. That, just, yeah, check out that pack in your own time. Uh, there's other air roll shot packs that are all very useful as well. Uh, but yeah, I like Whey Protein's one because he's, he's usually really good at making training packs. And he, he does a lot of shots in his packs as well. Uh, so it's pretty good. Um, as far as advanced shots go that you want to be able to do besides air roll shots, which is a lot more of a, there. that's a lot more diverse. You know, air roll shots can be used for clears, passes, um, and uh, actual shooting itself. Uh, very, very diverse skill, absolutely important. Um, there's a couple of, you know, high level uh, shots or styles of shots that you want to be able to do. Uh, we talked about advanced defense earlier, challenging as a team. Uh, and I think air roll shots is like the, you know, you just have to press that button. <laughs> Get over that bad habit because I know a lot of people just refuse to touch that button if they're not recovering. Uh, but yeah, there's a couple and, you know, I'll highlight another few packs. Uh, Whey Protein Ceiling Shot Pack, excellent if you want to get uh, some ceiling shot practice in there. Uh, I would also recommend uh, Jacob's Hard Mode Redirects. I, I like Marky's Awkward Shooties Pack just because it's a little bit more, it's a little bit different. A couple of redirects in there, a couple of advanced rebounds and also rebounds that you need to put straight in the ball's not allowed to bounce on the way in uh, but I'm not going to show you all these you can check them out yourself I'm not going to sit here and show them all uh, and I have shown you this pack in the past I think it's excellent uh, for getting that air control up to a higher level uh, and that's the self set backboard or set set, set back yeah self set backboard consistency it's an aerial double touch rebound uh, pack and if you want to see another one uh, of that same kind because I know it is a lot of fun uh, there's air air backboard double touches by Zebrafy, so that's Zebrafy, Flabby Nostril, Marky Duda, Jacob, Whey Protein, all these packs. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show you them, but they're all gonna help you practice your advanced shooting ability, just make you more deadly, um, get you scoring more, get you creating more chances for your team, uh, getting you putting the other team in awkward positions. Uh, so definitely try. I'd, I'd I'd recommend giving them all a go. They're very fun. I think they're I think they're some of the best training packs out there uh, for that higher range. Um, but yeah, that, that pretty much brings me to the end of this. I'll summary, I'll do a summary uh, just to finish things off here. But I think, yeah, from bronze to silver, it's all about playing safe, cover the goal in kickoffs, find space on the pitch, be ready to defend everything. Then silver to gold, you're trying to surprise your team, uh, you're, you're trying to surprise your opponents a little bit more uh, by using that back wall. A lot of players at lower rank aren't comfortable using the back wall, but yeah, use that back wall for defense. Power clears to catch them off guard. Uh, and fast aerials to, you know, get up there, whether it be in defense or offense, uh, faster than people expect you to. Then, yeah, gold to plat, high percentage plays. Got to get your power sliding down. Get your ground moves down, your pops, your flicks, your shots. Uh, and also defending that kind of thing. I know shadow defense is something you really want to work on 
uh, at gold through platinum. I don't even, I even mention that, but I meant to mention that. I meant to say shadow defense as well. You must get familiar with shadow defense in the gold through plat range because although you're going to be bringing pops and flicks and uh, dribbling moves to your opponents, they're going to be doing the same to you. And the best way to defend against those is by shadowing. And again, I'm not going to go into super uh, detail right now in this in this uh, little video, but if uh, I was going to recommend a tutorial, I'd say check out Sunless Khan's tutorial in, on shadow defense. I think it's very good, excellent uh, description of how to do it and how to do it better. Uh, plat through diamond, half flips, well recoveries, uh, just clean landings, all about the speed and efficiency. We want to start boost starving and demoing to break down defense and yet get wall shots down. This is a part of the game where, yeah, if you're not already comfortable on the wall uh, all around the field, you better be now. And like I said before, side flipping off the wall to begin with. But after you get good at that, when you want to get further away from the wall and reach a ball, you're going to have to start, you know, jumping off a wall and flying. And that involves air rolling maybe to, uh, to self right and then whether or not you have your dodge, uh, you're going to be able to get further away uh, from the wall and hit that shot. And lastly, uh, or no, second last, or penultimately, Diamond to Champ is all about those rebounds and the ground passing and the mind games and also the counter-attack passing. But yeah, it's all about team play. Uh, we're going to get up to rebounds, uh, things that are, well, it might be our teammate that's passed, it might be ourselves, we're doing a little team play with ourselves. Uh, but yeah, get those passing plays down for counter-attacks and infield passes. Uh, and they're also going to enable mind games because it's the kind of level where people start to think a little bit more about what you're doing as well as what they're doing. And like I said, from champ to grand champ, it's all about the advanced offense and defense. Challenge as a team. Don't dive in. Stall for time if you're alone. Don't isolate yourself. Don't isolate your teammates. Uh, try to figure out where they're going, what they're doing, and try to position as a unit, but not too close because uh, you need to give each other space as well. Uh, air roll shots, air roll clears, air roll hits in general. Familiarize yourself with that air roll button. Uh, for things besides recovering me uh, recovery mechanics. You need to be able to do that uh, for shooting purposes if you want to hit those shots from tight angles with power. And all the types of advanced shots, just to close off, yeah, aerial double touch rebounds, ceiling shots, redirects. You know, there's even a couple of flip reset packs out there and wave dash shots packs that you can check out. Uh, although they're a little bit maybe less important, I'd say, than, <laughs> than redirects, uh, double touches and ceiling shots. But yeah, that's it. That's my top tips for ranking up from uh, bronze all the way to grand champ. So, like I said before, if just because you've made it to one of the milestones that I listed in this video, that doesn't mean you stop practicing the things uh, that I suggested you practice in the earlier ranks. I'm just uh, making this video to give you guys an idea of when you should start to worry about different things, what you should be focusing on, what your mindset should be, what you should expect. Uh, as high percentage win conditions throughout the ranks. Uh, and this is based on my own personal experience. It's based on, um, you know, former uh, coaching uh, that I used to do. Uh, and it's also based on just talking to uh, my friends in the lower ranks and knowing what they what they struggle with, what they see, what they, what they see work, what they uh, have trouble defending, that kind of thing. But yeah, that's going to be it. Definitely, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Hopefully, this video is available in more than 360p. Very, very sorry that yesterday's video was only available in 360p for some of you and not even available at all for others. Uh, I couldn't really do anything about that because YouTube just decided to poo the bed. But uh, yeah, I might upload that if um, if the quality options come through with a re-upload. I'll definitely uh, stick it up there so you guys who didn't get to see yesterday's video can. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching. I'm going to go because my voice is starting to get a little bit hoarse. Uh, definitely need to get something to drink. But yeah, big thanks once again to all of you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate that. Uh, and yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about this video and any other types of videos like this you would want to see, any topics you want to hear me talk about. Uh, yeah, let me know. And I'll, I'll be glad to uh, do the research and put that together for you guys. Once again, thanks for watching. I'm going to go and I'll see you guys next time.